on this episode, ice. A lot of ice and some more ice, but a very warm welcome. Good morning, guys. So I uh, had a comfortable sleep here in uh, Reykjavik and the weather's looking good to uh, Greenland. So today off to Kulusuk. <laughs> After getting some breakfast, I headed down to the airport with a bit of anxiety thinking of the challenging flights ahead. So, Reykjavik to Kulusuk, here we go. Let's get the ATIS. Reykjavik Airport, ATIS information Delta at 09 zero zero Zulu, runway 19 in use. All right, so that's information Delta, let's get the clearance. All right, so we got our oceanic clearance, which is flight level 100. And as planned, Sorir Sopen Vaksan Delta Alpha. I'm just gonna try and give Kulasuk a call. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm on my way. See you soon. Excellent. All right, all good with Kulasuk. We got our startup clearance. We're good to go. Clear prop. And ground Lima Yankee Bravo in from Missoula request uh, taxi. So we'll be taking off runway 19er, which is the opposite direction uh, when uh, we came in yesterday. Take off power set, engine is a green, airspeed is alive. So just leveled off at flight level 100, just setting our cruise power now. We'll aim for a true airspeed of around 130 knots and roughly 8 gallons per hour. This airplane is uh, very efficient and that's a good thing considering the fuel prices nowadays. So far I'm paying an average of uh, 3.5 euros per liter which works out to 13.3 euros per gallon and almost $15 per gallon. How's that for half gas? Yeah, I can't wait to get to uh, Canada and the States and uh, enjoy the low half gas prices there. Catching the last the glimpses of Iceland off to our right. So now we are with Iceland Radio. Uh, that means we're not going to be uh, under radar contact for quite a long time and we're giving them uh, position reports by radio and as you heard we might uh, lose radio reception as we get closer to Greenland so in case that happens they will just contact uh, Nuke which is uh, Greenland so far uh, below us uh, the weather looks good visibility one zero kilometers or more uh, clouds few uh, two Zero thousand feet. Uh, temperature uh, zero nine at degrees. Two point zero two degrees. So far, it's looking good up ahead. And uh, flight time remaining about uh, one hour. I can see Greenland. This is so exciting. I'm so happy. This is a dream come true for me, guys. And already quite a few icebergs up ahead. Um, some uh, sea fog along the shore to the right of me. Uh, up ahead it looks uh, looks better, looks okay. Um, hopefully it stays clear because these uh, northern shores they can really be unpredictable with the sea fog. You know, it's clear one minute and uh, visibility almost uh, nothing the next. So guys, what I thought was uh, sea fog is actually ice and a lot of it. So that's Kulusuk up ahead. And I'm gonna do a left downwind. Zulu turning left base from the 10. Just over flying the town of Kulusuk now and turning final. 
So, gas, undercarriage, one green, make sure prop. Lima Uniform Zulu, on ground, 3-1. Welcome to Kulusu. Thank you very much, Lima Uniform Zulu. Here we are, guys, Kulusuk. Greenland. Amazing. Stepping out onto Greenland for the first time was a magical feeling. It seemed like such a surreal place. Powerful and intimidating, to say the least. But the airport in Kulusuk is very welcoming. After refueling, I went up to the tower to pay all the fees and file my next flight plan over the ice cap. Ilula sat on the west coast of Greenland was my preferred destination, but the weather there was not cooperating. The airport was covered with a layer of low cloud, so I had to choose my next option, which was Skangelusuak. Also on the west coast, but a bit more inland, so it's not affected by the maritime weather as much. So, quick visit here in Kulusuk. Got some av gas, filed the flight plan at the tower. Very nice people, very helpful. They did all, all the planning, uh, all the work for me, <laughs> pretty much ahead of time. I just have to pay uh, another hefty uh, price for the av gas. And now we're off to Kangerlusuak. Three hour flight. Uh, the weather is not as good over there, but still uh, quite okay. Uh, we could expect some uh, rain later on. And uh, even though the weather looks not so good tomorrow, but uh, we'll uh, get there tonight and uh, spend the night. We'll see uh, how it goes. We'll take it from there. Off to our next stop, Kangerlusuak. We are now starting uh, our journey over the ice cap, and what a sight! It just kind of fades with the sky. There's, uh, there is a layer of cloud, I suppose, and it's hard to see. Looks like it will have no horizon at all. So guys, this is the first time on the trip that I'm uh, climbing above flight level 100 and that means oxygen. How does that look? So I set the flow rate and uh, I'm going to be uh, checking my blood oxygen level to make sure I'm getting enough oxygen. Let's do that now. I am at 92%. And increase, 93. And we are coming up on flight level 120. Yeah, guys, this is crazy. No horizon reference at all. But no confirmation, Lima Yankee Bravo Uniform uh, Zulu is level at flight level 120. Okay, so we got our uh, clearance uh, to Kangalusuak which is pretty simple. Whiskey 28 is the airway of propelling and maintain the flight level 120. That's that. So yeah, this is definitely a strange feeling uh, flying over the ice cap and uh, knowing that you will be out of uh, radar coverage. You don't see anything, uh, just a lot of white below you and the sky above. So for sure, I would be lying if I uh, said I didn't feel uh, nervous at all. There's a bit of a, a butterfly uh, feeling in my stomach. 
so definitely uh, an interesting experience. Also, I'm hungry. So I will have this chicken shawarma that I bought in uh, Reykjavik. And before I do that, let's turn on our Iridium sun phone. So that's another uh, backup communication option in case something does go wrong. Descending into Gangalusuak, the ice cap was showing signs of a summer melt. During the summer, as the temperatures rise, the surface ice starts to melt. This creates a network of meltwater streams, ponds and rivers on the ice surface that appear in the stunning blue color. Closer to the edge of the ice cap, the ice shows its paths of movement, squeezing into the valleys and melting into rivers or breaking off as icebergs and drifting through the fjords out into the open sea. The landscape here is just incredible. And the west coast of Greenland was actually starting to show some green. Over the airport the weather is great and the air traffic controller asks if I could make a short visual approach since there is an Air Greenland flight approaching from the west. I gladly accept the request and make a dive for the runway. Welcome to Gangerlusuak. Gangerlusuak is a small town with a population of just over 500 people. It's a former US military base back from the Second World War and is now Greenland's main air transport hub, with the biggest commercial airport in the country. Large airliners bring in passengers and cargo from overseas and then a fleet of smaller turboprop aircraft carry them onwards to other towns in Greenland. Okay, so that was pretty cool. The uh, handler and the uh, yellow car just gave me a ride from the aircraft all the way to my hotel which is uh, right outside the airport gate so talk about a quick commute anyways uh, nobody here I think but should be a key left for me well that's home for tonight so let's go check out the town. The ground here is permafrost, which means it remains frozen throughout the year. Building houses with conventional foundations is challenging on permafrost due to its instability. When the permafrost thaws, it can lead to ground subsidence, where the previously solid ground becomes uneven or collapses. This can cause structural damage to buildings, and to address this issue, houses here are usually built on stilts or pilings allowing for air circulation underneath and reducing the heat transfer to the ground. I found the people here to be very friendly. Almost everyone you meet waves or says hello, and they generally seem very happy. I check out the local supermarket and get a bite to eat. Right next to the town flows the Kinguata Kusua River, a meltwater outflow from the ice sheet. The bridge that runs over it is an interesting place to visit where the river shows its raw power. Back in 2012, the melt was so rapid that it took out the bridge completely. Over the bridge, I decided to head up to the hill, actually called the Black Ridge, where I was told I can expect a nice overlook of the town and the surrounding area. The hill is a spot for all kinds of antennas, new or old and abandoned, like this one. The view did not disappoint. Let's see if we can spot our airplane. There it is. The mosquitoes here are just relentless. And the wind is pretty strong, we still managed to catch you. I've been bitten like 
50 times already. You can see the ice sheet over there. It's about 25 kilometers away. At the base of the hill is an interesting curved rock formation that I went to check out. So after a long hard ride up the mountain, time for some ice cream. Also, I went in to check out the airport, but there are usually no flights in the evening and the restaurant was already closed. So I decided to call it a day and went back to my room. The next morning it was pretty obvious that it was going to be a down day. The Calut was not showing any signs of decent weather and it was cloudy all the way to Canada with icing forecasted en route. Icing is when due to the atmospheric conditions ice forms on the aircraft which can be very dangerous. Especially in an aircraft like mine which doesn't have any system to shed the ice. I went down to the airport office to inform them of my extended stay and also to grab some stuff from the aircraft. With all that taken care of, it was time to find something to do. Luckily, there were some spots left on a tour to the ice cap. We're gonna take this beast of a bus through some rugged Greenlandic landscape. Little did I know this would be one of the more interesting tours I've ever had. To the left, Sunday Arctic Desert Golf Course, when it was established in the 1980s. Surprisingly, the road to the ice cap has quite a lot of cool spots with interesting stories behind them. For example, this is a golf course that even has its own clubhouse. Here is a crash site of one of the three Lockheed T-33A aircraft of the United States Air Force that were traveling from Goose Bay, Canada to Kangerlussuaq. They encountered bad weather near the airbase at Kangerlussuaq and were forced to circle the area looking for an opportunity to land until they ran out of fuel. The crew members eventually bailed out and made it to safety. The road to the ice cap was originally built by Volkswagen just over 20 years ago for the purpose of testing their vehicles in extreme conditions. Their project was abandoned in 2006 and now the road is mostly used for tourism and research. As we get to the end of the road, it's a short hike over the lunar-like landscape to reach the ice cap. Even though the visibility is not the best, still on top of the ice cap. How about that? And it is cold here. It's windy and it's just uh, blowing with uh, kind of a spray. And I was just flying the drone for about 10 minutes. I can't feel my hands anymore. <laughs> what a place though. Incredible. A lot of fun. On the way back we make a stop for some hot tea and cookies where I take the opportunity to fly the drone and capture some more beauty of this place. As we head back to town we even manage to get a glimpse of the muskox grazing in the distance. As another fun day comes to an end, Greenland did not disappoint. Let's see what tomorrow brings.